All right, thank you. So, <clears throat> yeah, re so referring to slide 40, when plotted together, one can see that the sudden change in strain gauge readout coincides with the large acoustic event. <clears throat> Some of the gauges showed a change in strain response after dive 80. Ocean gate strain data was typically and perhaps always plotted as a function of time. The changes in mechanical response are easier to visualize by plotting the strain against dive depth as shown here for the hoop strain at gauge group four. <clears throat> plotting the data in this manner is more akin to a stress strain plot, which is a standard way of visualizing this type of data. For dive 80, prior to the event, <clears throat> Really, <clears throat> excuse me. The relationship between strain and dive depth was a straight line for both the descent and the ascent. Going, yeah, okay. Going backwards in time by three dives and comparing dive 80 to an earlier dive 75 reveals no significant change from dive to dive. Moving forward in time and looking at dive 81, the dive immediately after the event we see a change in the initial strain response of the hull. The next slide focuses on the initial and final 1,000 meters of the dive. The graph on the left shows the hoop strain, and the graph on the right shows the longitudinal strain. Changes in the initial strain response are seen in both directions. Furthermore, the changes persist from dive 81 through dive 83 which is the last dive for which we have strain data. Do you want to, yeah, you can swap back over now. Next slide. It's coming, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, so changes in strain response after dive 80 were also seen for the longitudinal strain for gauge group five and to a lesser extent for the hoop strain at gauge group eight. Those changes also persisted for dives 82 and 83. There were no apparent changes for groups three or seven. Perhaps we should switch over to the PDF version. Agreed. Uh, Lieutenant Steele, let's just stick with yeah. uh, the, power, the PDF. Next slide. Make sure I get my bearings right here. So the acoustic emission response at the forward port side sensor showed a slight initial <clears throat> uh, increase after dive 80 and a fall off afterwards. Here we see the response for dive 80 and its spike in acoustic activity after returning to the surface. Looking at dive 81, there was an increase in acoustic activity 
during the descent, and once again an increase in activity after returning to the surface. Dives 82 and 83 show a trend of the hull becoming quieter with successive dives as seen here for dive 82. Next slide, and here, yeah, and here for dive 83. Um, one note about dive 83, this dive did not take place at the Titanic wreck site and did not go to the same depth as the other dives. According to the dive log, it reached a depth of 2,954 meters. This is the last dive for which acoustic emission and strain data is available. 